Hi guys, welcome back to the quarterly result update. So today we are going to be talking about Sula wine yarns, right? So as you all know, uh, I think from the name itself, you understand that Sula makes wine, right? And uh, let's just, you know, and let's just see how has the company done? Because if you see last quarter, they had guided for a 20%, a 20%, uh, a 20% you know, they had given a guidance for 20% growth. And they told that out of this 20%, 15% is going to come from volume growth. And the rest 5 to 7% is going to come from value growth. So let us see how has the company done. Done, you know has the management really backed up to what they have told and going forward what will be the uh what will be the you know the demand and the outlook like right so first thing first let us just take a few minutes to understand the business model right just in simple terms i'll try to wrap it up in like two minutes so uh as you know sula uh sula is uh, sula makes wine just from the name itself so when you look at the revenue contribution there are three there are three sources of revenue for them one is their own brands which contributes around 86 percent of the revenue the second is the third party brands now what are these third party brands the you know somebody somebody's wine they sell it because they have a really good distribution system now this contributes four percent to the uh, top line then the third Third part is the wine tourism. Wine tourism is, you know, they have their own vineyard where you can go visit their vineyard. You can see how they make wines and, you know, like have some tasters there. And this contributes around eight, eight, oh uh, yeah, this contributes around 8% to the top line. And over the years, right, Tula has been very particular, you know, that they want to be a leader in the market. You can already see that they own 60% market share in the premium wines, right? Not just that, you know, they have also told, you know, that, you know, Sula would be, you know, the own brand company, which means what going forward, they just want to focus on selling their own own wine and if you see compared it to the pre-covid level to right now also the mix has been changing significantly like earlier if you see the own branch used to uh, used to contribute around 60 percent to the revenue and uh, the third party branch used to contribute 30 percent but right now uh, right now in this quarter you can see that the own brands are contributing 86 percent whereas the third brand third brands are, uh, are contributing hardly four percent to the revenue right the next thing that they have been focusing on other than this is the premiumization. I keep talking about this premiumization in the whole consumption space, right? And even in here, even in their own brand uh, wines that are there, there are two kinds of wine. One is the economy wine and the other one is the premium wine. Economy wines are those where the wines are, you know, below 600, 500 rupees in that range. Whereas premium wines are those about 600, 700 rupees, you know, that is a range of wines. Now, of course, right, think about this when uh, this below 500 rupees ka wine that is there, it faces a lot of competition from this unorganized space, right? And they give a lot of heavy discount. And so it is not very margin accretive also for the brand, right? So that is why they want to focus on the whole 600, 700 category because, you know, that, that, that is what works best for them, right? So if you see, right, today, let's see, you know, how, you know, how that has also done. If you look at the result, right, uh, first thing first is to note is that in the wine industry, Q1 is seasonally weak, right? So you can't do a QQ comparison here. But in spite of that, Q1 has been, you know really great set of numbers for them you know like absolutely great if you see that the top line has grown by 21 percent and the bottom line that is a profit you can see the profit after tax has grown by uh has has grown by 24 percent 24 i think 24.1 percent that to be to be precise right so here also you can see a bit of operating leverage come into play right as we talk uh, when you talk about this 21% growth in top line, right? I keep talking about in top line, whenever you see, you need to have both a good business will have a combination of both volume growth as well as value growth. If you see that the volume growth in the top line has been 15% and the value growth that is that comes from price hike or increase in price hike is hardly, is, uh, is 5 to 7%, right? So like I told you in the beginning of the video when I started, right? Like the management has really executed what they spoke. They told they'll do a 20% growth in top line. They've done that. They've also told you know 15 percent aga volume growth and other punchy sat percent aga value growth say that also they have done right the only thing is uh, the margins the margins if you see whether the EBITDA margin or the profit margin are somewhat flat because uh, on a year on year if you see this EBITDA margin has grown from 27.1 to 27.4 similarly with pat margin not a huge change like 11.4 to 11.7 percent on a year on year basis now let us just talk, you know, like every segment, you know, how it has done, right? If you see the own brands, like like started in the beginning of the video also, they want to make Sula as, you know, they uh, only start doing their own wines. If you see that the own brand has grown by 30% on a year on year basis, it just shows that, you know, Sula is positioning itself as a really great brand out there. You know, when you think about wines, you think about Sula, right? That is one thing. The next thing, like I told you, is that they're focusing on is a premiumization. Even in terms of premiumization, you see their premium wines has grown 35 
impact on a year on year basis you know and the economic uh, share is also coming down as we talk about it but the premium wines has grown by 35% not just that if you see the wine tourism right like even in last quarter i really remember that you know uh, the the md talking about you know they, that they have a lot of demand for this uh, for their resort that is their, uh, the resorts in their vineyard but they just can't cater to it because they have very limited number of rooms right so even here also the wine tourism has grown by 12% on a year on year basis not just that they have expanded the number of rooms also so earlier in the resort tha, the wine resort tha, it used to con it it had uh, 63 rooms and now it has 100 rooms you know they've done that uh, they've expanded uh, sorry yeah they've added more number of rooms and one more interesting thing about this uh, this wine uh, wine tourism or the business model that they have here with respect to that is it is a very asset like model which means what they they uh, the buildings that are there that are leased out in which are created in their uh, in their vineyard it is leased out and you know uh, but at the end of the day no profit is shared with the person who's building the building right they they own 100% of that so in one way again it is also adding adding to it the next thing is you know if you see uh uh, you know, they uh, overall, if you can see right on all basis, if you see whether it is on volume growth, value growth, everything has been, you know, they have been doing well, not just that, you know, uh, in, in terms of the state, uh, like I told you, you know, the margins has been a bit impacted, right? Not impacted, but it has stayed flat. The reason why for that is if you see for Sula, there are two main regions that is Maharashtra and Karnataka. That is where, you know, they, uh, they, uh, you know, they're very, uh, they get their maximum growth from, right? It contributes a lot to their revenue. Uh, one of the reasons is because in Maharashtra, what has happened, the sale of wine has not been that much, right? Uh, uh, you know, uh, the sales, they, it, it didn't meet the targets. It, it wasn't that much. That is why you see that the margins has not improved, right? One of the reasons is that. The other thing is also like in terms of when you talk about it is a is a is a pricing like I told you right uh, uh, like like one of the risks that remains with the Sulaka model is because the state government can intervene anytime and you know can increase the taxes and everything then you know because of that the price hike becomes a bit of problem. So here also only in Maharashtra and Karnataka they have free pricing which means what they can price the wine how much ever they want to whereas in other states you know they can hardly get a price increase of two to three percent right. So as a result also like in other states. They, ha they haven't been able to get the price hike and in, I think in Maharashtra and Karnataka they've been able to get a price hike of 3 to 5 percent that is one right so uh, overall even in case if you see the capex car that they've done right uh, if you see in fi23 and fi24 combined they have they they had a plan of doing 140 crore car capex and even in fi23 q4 you would have seen that the demand was so much that they were not able to cater to that demand so they put up an additional capacity right earlier it used to they had a 14 million capacity for wines and they added an additional 6 million capacity also so you see when that is going on really well and you can see that also right reflect in terms of number the whole purpose of doing that capacity was to get a double digit volume growth and you can see that you know uh, eventually getting reflected here i think the only see in in all cases if you see whether you know you see in the top line in top line there are two metrics volume growth and value growth tick mark done profitability good margins also it has not been impacted at the end of the day it has just been flat but still good capacity expansion is happening good the demand for the wine is great you're not seeing any subdue in demand of that so good all in all everything is good here right like there is absolutely no problem with with sula as a business so the only problem that emerges is the whips problem now what is this whips whips the full form of whips is basically this wine industry promotion subsidy right now what does this mean see earlier you know the whole wine industry was uh very it was in a nascent stage right like if you had to see around five to ten years back hardly we didn't have that wine kind of culture in india right so the government wanted to promote it so the maharashtra government what they did and also one of the things is you see to grow these grapes it has to be grown in a very conducive environment right like you know the temperature has to be right it shouldn't be too sunny and there are only few regions where grapes can be grown like for example certain regions in karnataka and certain regions in maharashtra especially nashik right nashik is very well known for you know growing growing grapes and you know a lot of vineyards so maharashtra government what they did they understood this opportunity and they started this whole whips scheme wine industry promotion subsidy right so what does this mean let's say if you are a if you are a wine company and if you are growing grapes in maharashtra and you are manufacturing those like growing the grapes in maharashtra and manufacturing the grapes uh, manufacturing the wine in maharashtra and you and you get and you sell it and you sell it in maharashtra what happens is you get a tax refund you get a grant because of this right your gst or your grant whatever is there you 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 get a subsidy out of that right 
so this is what sula used to get earlier right uh, they they were under this scheme and you know they used to always you know they, uh, the gst and you know uh, the, the, the tax was levied upon them there was no tax they had to pay on this uh, on any wine that is sold in maharashtra now what has happened was uh, if you see i think the update came after the uh, after the q1 uh, not q1 just right before the q1 fi24 result an update had come that maharashtra government has imposed a tax of 115 crore now this was an issue because if you see the yearly profit if you see the fi23 ka total year ka profit for sula it was hardly 93 crores and the tax levied upon them was 115 crores now this is kind of a shocker right so because you are the maharashtra giving, government is giving the vipska scheme and also you are also imposing a tax on them now so this because now this this was a this was an issue so in the con call you know the management had told that you know this this case doesn't uh, is um, you know it it can be challenged in court you know they don't have to necessarily pay the tax this is a wrong enforcement and you know they have filed a filed a case uh, filed a case in court now the main reason for this is because see whoever the authority whoever the authoritative figure was said who imposed a tax on them he imposed a tax on them without even taking this matter to the government so what does it initially tell right any grapes that has been grown and uh, any wine that has been manufactured in maharashtra will not be imposed of any tax now what has happened here you know uh, they have they have manufactured uh, this wine in another winery it is in maharashtra only but not in their nashik winery but in some other winery and that is why that whole tax has been imposed and usually the tax is around rupees 10 per liter right and that is why this tax is so much 115 crore right so all in all you see right the whole case doesn't uh, is baseless also and this is not just an issue faced with sula with some other wineries also so all of them you know have put up you know have, are you know fighting against the court you know that this whole case is baseless so this is the only issue with in in terms of uh, in terms of sula you know the whole vipska scheme is there because if let's say if, if the Uh, if the case goes against them then of course right they'll have to pay but having said that the management is very you know is very uh, is very positive about the fact that they will win the case because the whole case like i told you is baseless because whatever the tax they put on them is again baseless because uh, the wine was manufactured in maharashtra as well as the grapes used for the manufacturing of wine was grown in maharashtra like grown and harvested in maharashtra so the whole case in the first place doesn't make sense so other than that if you see other than this whole vipska issue that is there that exists right there is no other there is no other problem with sula like everything if you see in terms of business right whether uh, if you compare all the metrics whether it is a top line bottom line volume value capacity expansion that they doing or the demand the, the the tailwinds that are there for the industry that you see is is there there is absolutely no problem so the only problem again reiterating the fact remains whips and you know this is something you know we just have to wait and see how it goes um, because again it it only depends on the court and you know how the situation is and it is if you see also it is not the first time if you if you look at any alcohol industry in general like if you see even united spirits or radico khaitan or any of this they've gone through these kind of cases many many times you know every time there will come a state government intervene with the matters and you know or sometimes they will take this you know state government will increase a tax on the alcohol industry so it is not the first time these are i think a part and parcel of being in an alcohol uh, alcohol beverage industry so again yeah so that's that about sula and yeah uh, i'll see you again with another business model again uh, next time so until then goodbye bye